Welcome to the show. This is episode six of the conversation with Sky Women. We talk to women who have fallen victim to all kinds of scams online. And in some instances, these women have lost not only millions, but they've lost their families, they've lost their dignity, they've lost their support system. And in some cases, these women end up in such desperate situations that they end up in shelters, not having anywhere else to go. And we may think that we are immune to this happening to us, but believe it or not, this happens to professional business people, to doctors, to lawyers. It can happen to just about everyone. We, today, we share the story of, the name, of a lady by the name of Pietro Swart. So don't go anywhere. We'll share her story shortly. Welcome back. If you've just joined us on the conversation live about online safety, I'm your host, Bridgette Lombanda from Cape Town in South Africa. I am a talk show host and producer, and I interview thought leaders, I interview brands, uh, entrepreneurs, authors, anyone in the nonprofit or social good space. Sky Woman is an NPO formed by Louise Haynes, who researched various forms of scams for over three years. And one of its key focuses is education and empowerment. We share stories of women who've been scammed, and today we talk to Pietro Swat. Pietro is not going to appear on camera, but she is joining us via voice. So I'm going to say welcome to the show, Pietro. Thank you very much, Bridget. Okay, let me start with my story. Okay, two years ago, my husband, my, two years ago, my husband passed away, and I was told by my kids I should carry on with my life, and they loaded me on Instagram. I got about 15 requests on the first day, but I didn't actually accept any of them. On the second day, I got about 30 requests, and I singled out one of these requests and I accepted it. Okay, he told me he was a an oil rig in Norway and he lost his wife, he had three kids and he was practically a millionaire but he's caught on an oil rig working in Norway. We started chatting, it was approximately about eight or nine months he never asked for anything, but every day we used to pray every morning, we used to pray every night, we used to talk religion, and this just wowed me. All of a sudden, he started getting problems financially, and his money was apparently stuck in America, and he couldn't get access to his money. So, Pietro, before okay, you carry so on, Pietro, how long did from the time period when he made contact with you to that period in which you were being, you didn't realize it at the time, but you were basically being groomed. How long was that period? About four or five months. Four or five months. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So all of a sudden he started having financial difficulties and he asked me to help him. Can you, can you give me one second? Pietro, so, sorry, uh, Carlos has just told me that, um, Carlos, thanks for letting me know that you don't hear any audio. Let me just check that quickly um, before you carry on. Carlos, can you tell me, are you hearing her audio now or not? Be great for anyone who's listening. Please let me know if the audio is coming through. Ah, Okay. The audio is fine. I just noticed Carla's comment. Carry on, Pietro. 
Okay, then he uh, asked me to help him. His daughter was in a motor vehicle accident. She was under the influence after she stole his car keys. And she was now in a critical condition in hospital. And they needed to start treatment. And they wouldn't start treatment until he's put a deposit down to pay for her treatment, which was the first amount that I paid down. And um, they started treatment. At that stage, she was apparently in a coma and her jaw was wired and she was getting treatment. Then the next step was money for a machine that had exploded on the rig that he had to replace because um, his funds was now tightened in America and he couldn't get access to his money, which I then transferred the second amount of money. How then much money are we talking on, about, Kendra? We're talking the first the first amount of money that I sent was ten thousand rand, South African rand, and the second lot was seventy one thousand rand. Okay. The second amount of money. Then he carried on, and then the next amount was a little bit more which at that stage, my pension had come through. And, and he, knew, he knew that? Paid. He knew that because um, bef beforehand, he asked me questions of what I was doing. And I said to him, I was retired and I was waiting for my pension fund money and things like that. And he knew about that. So the next thing, my pension money came through and I uh, deposited that full amount into a bank account. But it, what, uh, three of the transfers was through Western Union. It was through my net bank account into a bank, three banking accounts in America. So that's what I did. And when he contacted me again, he said to me he needed more money. And I told him I don't have any more money. And I confronted him. And then... Um, he blocked me. Immediately he blocked me on everything. He didn't contact me anymore, nothing. Then he kept quiet for a while and then he contacted me again and he wanted me to help him again. And I said to him, there's no way that I could help you because I don't have any more. I only now have my property, my flat that was available. So he said to me, can I not sell the property? And that's what I did. I sold the property. What made you what made you listen to him at that point? Why were you un, why do you feel you were unable to stop at that point? Because he was very, very convincing. His daughter at that stage was now chatting to me on Hangout as well. And she was promising me and telling me her dad is real and he's not a scam and I must believe him. And they sent me addresses and uh, photos of the home that they own in, in the U.S. And she said to me that she wants me to be coming soon. And if he can get that money, he can come to America and arrange for my visiting passport and my letter of uh, recommendation so that I can come through to America to live with them. Okay. And, and did you feel in your gut, did you, did you have any warning signs in your gut at that point? The only warning sign I had at that point was he didn't want a video call because he dropped his phone in the bath. And the phone was damaged, according to him. The phone was damaged. He, he couldn't video call with me. That's when the, that was the only red flag that I saw in all of the conversations and everything we had. Because remember, this man was now talking religion to me. And I was in a previous marriage where religion meant a lot to me. So that was actually a plus point. Because I knew, why would, why would a man in religion lie to me? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
And and tell me, did you share any of this with with any of your in real life friends or with your family, or did you keep all of this quiet to yourself? At first, I kept it quiet, but then all of a sudden, I actually broke down and I told my daughter. He even spoke to my daughter on the phone and convinced her that he was real. And then, then the red flags came up with me and my daughter together when we con- confronted him. The red flags came up one by one by one. Yeah. Pietro, um, if you look back on your experience now, uh, it took four months. It took four months of grooming before he went in for the kill. Yes. What would you want to say to women um, in your situation where you're feeling lonely and vulnerable, and they are on social media? What are the lessons learned that you would like other people to know? Okay, first of all, I was in the net bank fraud department, and I never knew about cyber fraud and this type of crimes not at all i was a victim of psychological crime and emotional abuse people label you they judge you you lose your family you lose everything i ended up in a shelter and it's not a nice place to be we need to to educate people women specifically about these things we need to get shelters for people that was scammed by ca- cases like these. Today, shelters is not for, for people for psychological and emotional, emotional abuse. All I, wa- all I wanted was love, and the scammer knew that. They are bad people. Please, ladies, don't give any money to anyone. Don't get caught up and don't give in. We salute you all because you all are wonderful women. May God bless you all. So we need some form of support system other than what people find um, online. We need real life support systems for for people. And, um, and we need a lot more education about people who have been like yourself, who've been victims yes. of online psychological crime. Because the, yes. the crime against you basically continues after you've yes. been scammed. Because yes. essentially, um, that crime is continued by your family members, by your circle of friends, um, yes. by business associates. Anybody in, within your circle is perpetuating the crime against you by not finding means or ways to support you definitely definitely i've got no means of support my kids don't want to know anything about me according to them i'm dead they don't want to know me i've lost all their inheritance and my friends has just caused tears all the time for me what do you want to say to your family at this point um Pietro, what do you want to say to your children? I want to say to my kids, I'm sorry for what I've done. God has forgiven me. Why can't you forgive me? That's what I want to say to them. I'm only human. Everybody makes mistakes. And I made the mistake. And I've paid very dearly for it. I want to reiterate to everyone that Um, You know, the idea that this only happens to lonely women is an absolute fallacy. It happens to people who are highly educated. It happens to doctors. It happens to lawyers. It can happen to absolutely anyone and everyone. And unfortunately, these scammers are people who um, are professionals. They seek out women. who are vulnerable, what do you want to say to women who wear their sleeves uh, or their heart on their sleeves on social media? What is your advice to them, Pietro? Be careful. Read the red flags and don't give in to them. They will do anything to get money out of you. Anything. Definitely. 
And would would you what would you say about protecting your social media accounts and befriending people that you don't know? What's your advice? Please go on social media and secure everything, your WhatsApp, your Facebook. Stay off sites where you don't need to be on. I have I've actually uninstalled Instagram, I've uninstalled Hangout, I don't go on any dating sites. Um, at the moment, I am just on Facebook with my family, close family that is still close to me. And my WhatsApp is mainly also my close family that still supports me in a little bit of a, a way. But otherwise, don't go anywhere without securing your sites and your Facebook and your WhatsApp. Are there any support systems out there for women like yourself at the moment? that you are nothing, aware of? Nothing at all. I don't have any support. I haven't seen a psychologist. I haven't been able to talk to anybody regarding this. And that is scary because the South African police tells you nobody held a gun to your head to take your money. You gave it freely. So there is no case we cannot help you. I have got no support whatsoever. I'm staying in a shelter with appalling conditions and it is terrible. Have you been able to secure a case number uh, uh, with, the, with the South African police? They refuse to give me a case number. I've been in contact with um, a colonel in a specialized crime unit in Krugersdorp where the scammer is at the moment. And he said to me, there's no case because I didn't open a case. When I went to the police station, they refused to open a case for me. And has Sky Women been able to, to assist you in any way? Wonderful. Louise, you, Gillian, Monia, all wonderful people. I want to thank all of you. You've been my moral support all the way. Um, Pietro, if you could give one piece of advice to um, people who are families of women who've been scammed, what would you ask them? Please stand by your family. Support them in every way you can. They are all you have. And tomorrow might be too late if you don't support them. What are one of the risks that you face? Um, I'm going to ask you because I've, I've, I've heard this from other women. Um, do, you, do you feel that you are suicidal? Yes, at the moment, yesterday and the day before, I was very suicidal. And thanks to Julian, Monia and Louise, they helped me cope and go through it. And... If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been here today. At the moment, I'm in a very, very bad place and I'm not happy. But there's nothing I can do because I've got nowhere to go, no family to take me in, nothing at this point in time in my life. So stand by your family, people. It might be too late tomorrow. Pietro, I want to thank you for your strength and your courage for sharing your story. And I really do hope that your, your children and your family will, will hear this message and that they will reach out to you and open up their hearts to you again. Um, I'm sorry that you've ended up in this situation. Um, and again, the reason we are broadcasting this is that we want to create awareness. We want to help people understand that this can happen to anyone and everyone. Um, we all go through periods in our lives where we are lonely, we feel sad, whatever the circumstances may be around that. But the warning is that when you find yourself in a vulnerable situation, to be very careful how you share that on social media um, be careful who you know that the people that you discuss this with are people that you know in real life. 
and yes. um Definitely. and the moment someone tries to i think you know the pattern i've noticed pietro is that when these people offer support uh, i've seen this in almost every single interview i've done this their their method seems to be to find a way of isolating you and having these conversations in a manner that will um win your confidence by seeking to um pull you away from your real life friends and from your family yes definitely they do that i was taken off instagram to hang out and we 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 spoke on telephone calls practically 7 to 10 times a day he used to call me and chat to me and um every time that he chatted to me it was religion 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 So the warning is be incredibly careful. Um and the other alarm bell that I seem to um that seems to be a common thread as well is when they find creative ways of not wanting to talk to you on camera. There will always be some form of um excuse why they cannot appear uh on camera. And that would yes. be another warning sign. definitely definitely because he's ca- all of a sudden his phone fell in the bath and uh the the camera was damaged as well as his daughter she couldn't talk to me because her her jaw was wired and she only typed to me via via hangout the other thread that i seem to um that seems to come through from everyone i've spoken to so far is to create awareness that these are professional scammers and that they use software to alter voices um they can they- change they can change their voices they can they can alter voices so that it can sound like a child it can sound like a female and and these means or tend to or att- is an attempt to create credibility to their story definitely because he had a very texan accent and he came from georgia according to him his house was in georgia and uh, he had a very very good texas texan accent and his spelling was immaculate he never made spelling mistakes at all so he was very professional in his job right we've got a comment from um from Barrent and also from Louise um and they asking that we find ways of supporting Sky Women it's a registered non-profit organization to help women um like Pietro who are stuck in an unfortunate situation of being um in a facility that is not clean and that is not safe and really not livable conditions that um people who are victims of cyber fraud shouldn't find themselves in so if you have a means of contributing to the nonprofit sky women then please reach out to them the links will be in the comments pietra i want to thank you for sharing your stories any fin- any final word you'd like to share with anyone ladies hanging the work with sky women we're going to make it to the end and we will get on top of it that's all and god bless you all thank you pietro and i want to thank each one of you for watching the show thank you um for listening to these stories thank you for helping us to create awareness please share this so that we help others or prevent others from falling in victim to the same type of scams Thank you again Pietro and thank you everyone for watching from me Brigitte Lambanda so in Cape Town Keep well Thank you Pietro Goodbye for now Bye bye Bye